everybody and welcome to The Chew. We got an amazing show for you and that's what's on our lineup. Did the US break German internet? Tel Aviv's Utopia Fest gathers world experts to take a look at the future. Samsung commercials attack Apple. Again, Microsoft buys Minecraft for $2 billion. Israeli YouTube wizard Kutiman is back with another viral music hit. The Social Watch and more. Let's go. It's leaking time with our favorite whistleblower, Mr. Edward Snowden. An NSA and GCHQ surveillance program dubbed Treasure Map grants US and British spokes access to the networks of German telecom companies such as Deutsche Telekom, according to a new stash of leaked documents from Ed Snowden. Der Spiegel published the latest revelations on Sunday, however, Monday came and Deutsche Telekom reportedly said it didn't find any evidence of such tampering on its system. The treasure map program was described by Snowden as a 300,000 foot view of the internet. Basically, Treasure Map evokes a kind of Google Earth for global data traffic, starring, well, you and everyone else. In a video published by web magazine The Intercept, engineers at Stellar Telecom Company were introduced to the evidence that they were followed by surveillance agencies. Take a look. This is actually the deck. That's the deck. That's the highest level. So, nun haben wir hier einmal eine Übersicht mhm. das ist nicht gut noch da oben. Und dann die Telia-Seite. Mhm. Das ist ja der andere Service Provider. Okay, They're very quiet there with all the surveillance. Let's move on. Okay, now it's time to look into the future. Utopia Festival for Science Fiction and Fantasy is being held these days in Tel Aviv, celebrating all things geeky, techy, and cool in this world. Utopia Festival is also in partnership with DLD Innovation Convention that is presenting the best and brightest of the startup nation. One of the conventions during the festival will gather some of the brightest futuristic minds around and discuss the way we are going to live in the future in various aspects from technological to social. Among those, well, smart people, you'd find Dr. Ido Zelet, head of the tech design faculty in Betalel Academy. Here's the futuristic vision his student had a couple of years ago. Welcome. Zombies from your backyard. Yeah, sorry for the mix-up. The name of the doctor is Dr. Eyal Fried, not Idoba Zelet, who made the, who's going to come and talk in the convention, and his students made the video we just saw. And now, to tell us a little bit of, uh, more about the convention and about the future, we are joined by the director of the festival, Uri Aviv. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So tell us a little bit about the future convention. Well, it, it's part of the Tel Aviv Utopia Festival, and I'll talk a little bit about that. We are um, we have two streams of consciousness. One mm -hmm. is a film festival, an international film festival focusing on science fiction film. We're a fantastic film festival, which means we portray anything that's weird, bizarre, strange, geeky, innovative in cinema, but we focus on science fiction. And the other aspect of that is we utilize science fiction to uh, discuss um, science and technology innova innovation and to discuss science and ethics in society. 
society. Mm -hmm. And obviously our outlook, our uh, perspective on the future, and that's the main program for our flag event this year, the Future Logical Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, science fiction offers two perspectives on the future. One is inspirational. We're inspired by science fiction to go out and venture and do stuff like exploring space or cyberspace. And the other aspect, the other perspective on the future is a more complex one of a dystop uh, um, that goes on to be dis a dystopic future. Science fiction alerts us to the dangers in, in, in sciences and technologies and when taken to an absurd condition mm -hmm. can uh, create, um, create stuff we want to avoid. So we're going to utilize that platform of science fiction to discuss both the inspirational part, the inspiration, inspir an inspirational outlook towards the future, mm -hmm. and alert us towards certain dangers in the future. Is there any uh, um, uh, consent about how uh, we're going to look like in 10, 15, 20 years? Well, 10 to 15, 20 years is a small time, but a very, very large time, depending on who you, who you ask. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no consensus, okay? There are um, uh, people who are um, uh, techno-utopians who think society will be transformed immeasurably in the next 20 years. The main one among them is, of course, known futurist, now Google employee, actually, a very, very high-ranking Google employee, Ray Kurzweil, mm -hmm. who's one of the leaders of the singularity movement. Okay. And he thinks we'll all be downloading to computers in 2045. And I don't even know what that means. Well, with brain research at, yeah. at, 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 at where it is, mm -hmm. and with a man-machine interface where it is, and with brain-computer um, research where it is, mm -hmm. we can actually, right now, delete memories and insert memories into our brains. So we're going to be part of a computer designing what sort of consciousness we have? Well, that's a, that's a big, big conversation about the singularity and where it is leading us. Okay, and other people would say? Well, other people would say that there's a lot of stuff that might hinder the uh, progress of science and technology further. And it's a lot to do with politics, it's a lot, a lot to do with tradition, a lot to do with regulation. Some of it we want. We want to be... Um, methodical, and we want to make sure that we're going in the right direction. But we can't, um, we can't stifle innovation, and we can't stifle um, progress. Mm -hmm. So it's a very thin line and a very complex system in order to make sure we, we're going in the right direction. That's some of the things we'll, we'll be talking about. On a personal note, as the person that you know, curated the lectures and has, I'm assuming, a point of view about what sort of future he would want the human race to have, um, uh, did you find yourself uh, leading what people need to talk about in a specific way? Well, actually, when thinking about that, we chose people who are multidisciplinary, who mm -hmm. are who can speak to filmmakers on one evening and can speak to technologists on another evening. And we've got a number of people like that. Um, uh, the main thing I would say is that um, people who are from the technology and uh, from the technology sector and have been always and, and immersed in that sector alone can't see a whole picture as much as the people from the humanities side can't see a whole picture. And we're, we're looking for people who have delved in both sides of the pool or, or, are, or are fluent in both languages in order to, to speak to a more complex vision of the future. Um, we're using um, science fiction and uh, the, con the Congress is divided uh, towards um, inspiration. Mm -hmm. And in that we'll have um, a view of brain research and where it is right now, synthetic biology and where it is right now, and um, robotics and where it is right now, and many other issues. I think genetics as well. And the dystopic or uh, alerting us towards the future would be uh, talks that delve into the complexity of systems. Well, it's super interesting. We're going to have here at the Tube a, a 
two-part special robotics special right. for you guys at home uh, based on uh, people from the Utopia Festival. Um, if people want from around the world to go online and read more, do you film the lectures? Is there any way of... Uh, you know, getting the info? Just go online to utopiafest.org.il. You'll find everything. It's bilingual. Sounds amazing. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. It's a yearly ceremony and a respected ancient tradition. Apple announces a new iPhone, and Samsung is going after them in brutal commercials. For years now, Samsung almost instantly swooped in with mocking ads that criticize Apple's latest announcements for being behind the curve and copying Samsung's innovations. This year is no exception, and arguably Samsung has even kicked things up a notch. It released a bunch of ads, both before and after the iPhone 6 announcement, and as usual, some are more effective than others. Here's one of their better ones. When the Galaxy Note launched in 2011, it was ahead of its time. And naturally, when things are new and different, sometimes people aren't ready for them. Experts saw the bigger screen and were like, you look like you're talking into a piece of toast. The Note is an unwieldy beast. Now it's not being dismissed by competitors, it's being imitated. Thing is, the Note is more than big. It's about being more productive. Wait for it. I like that part. More innovative. Oh, cool. More fun. Today, people are saying, is it just me or does the new iPhone 6 look like a Samsung Galaxy Note 2 from 2012? It's cute how Apple thinks their phablet is a fresh idea when Samsung Mobile has been excelling at them for years already. Hashtag next big thing. The new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The next big thing is here. Samsung, Samsung, yeah, I'll learn how to say that eventually. Now, want to make everyone you know jealous of your vacation? Well, apparently you don't have to travel far for that. Dutch graphic design student Zila van den Burn recently conducted an interesting experiment on the power of phony and misleading photos on social media. For five weeks, Van den Buren tricked her family and Facebook friends into thinking that she was on a long and exciting vacation through Southeast Asia. In reality, she never even set foot outside of her home city of Amsterdam. Van den Buren spent uh, 40 days vacation coming up with meticulously thought up adve adventures, photoshopping and placing herself in a number of situations you'd expect a tourist to partake in and sharing them on Facebook. And well, it worked, nobody suspected. Conclusion, be fake on Facebook. It works. And now, in 2009, Tel Aviv-based musician Ophir Koutiel released Through You, a project that made use of YouTube clips to craft original music. Koutiel, who works under the name Koutiman, is finally back with Give It Up, which further proves his talent for stitching together obscure samples into great, innovating music. Give It Up is comprised entirely of various clips from unknown musicians, including a six-year-old uh, pianist and a high school brass ensemble. These component clips are seamlessly threaded together into a new kind of song. It's sheer magic. Take a look. <laughs>
wonderful. Now, if you miss Mario from Super Mario fame, he is actually he's actually doing pretty well, working at making people's lives a little sadder. Yes, here is bad Mario. hate accident videos it's so sad that's it this show is over thanks for watching log on to our twitter and our tumblr it's the tube 24 and uh always remember anything's possible if you've got enough nerve that's jk rolling thank you for watching see you tomorrow